this is Justin Flukem from the Additive Guru channel and today we'll be looking at a Prusa clog on a Prusa Mark II in the heat brake. Currently I am taking off the nozzle so I can take the heat brake off along with the uh, heater cartridge and the thermistor so I can get access to the heat brake. The clogs that end up happening are usually caused by either the fan not blowing enough across the vents or the uh, material getting too soft because it was too hot to begin with and when it gets too hot it ends up melting somewhere up in here and then it sticks so you can't get it out without taking it apart. Essentially to get this nozzle off to get to the heat break I have to have the nozzle up to at least 240 I currently have it at around 260 to make sure that I can detach this nozzle without breaking it because if you don't have it hot when you do this it'll just snap it in half and then you'll have a whole nother problem because your heat brake will have a broken off nozzle in it and you'll have to buy a new one. All right, We found that this is a uh, heat brake extrusion issue where it's creeped all the way up from here at the very top all the way down to the bottom in the actual nozzle area and it's most likely caused by either a fan losing power or it's maybe got a clog that happened and the filament got in the fan and actually stopped the fan from running which would end up causing the filament's heat cycle off the heat brake to go all the way up the tube and all the way up the chamber to where it would cause what this problem is. The only way to really remedy this is to take it out of the printer and heat it up with a heat gun. That way you can melt whatever's in here and get rid of whatever's left over on the inside. Once you've got it heat it up, you can run this through to move all the plastic out of it. We'll probably end up having to replace this at the end, the PTFE tube. And as you can see, it's not going anywhere yet. See it start to creep out. And there we go. You see that little leftover piece right there. You want to try to get all that you can get out of it because ultimately, if there's leftover plastic in the inside here, it will cause it to do it again. You want to try to get as much out as you can. As you can see, there's junk that comes out. As long as we keep getting the stuff out, we're going to keep doing it. It seems like we got most of it out. So at this point we'll try to get our PTFE tube off. It's hot. Alright. We'll cut ourselves a new piece of tube to put down in there. Alright. Now we're going to replace the PTFE tube that we took out to begin with. And to get this length we're just going to kind of line it up and use the clips that came with it to snip it a nice smooth surface. That way you get kind of the same length. Of course if it isn't the right length we can always trim it down after we put it in. So we get a little nice little piece of PTFE tube like this. Take it in here. Shove it all the way down as far as it'll go. 
And then we've got to come in on the very top of this and route it out so it has a nice area for the uh, filament to flow into. The reason being you want to taper so it doesn't have a real sharp edge to hit when you try to feed the filament in. I'm going to try to get just a little bit of that off. And it might take some time to do. I'm not sure if you can make out that there's a taper in there. There's a slight taper along the edge just so we can feed in fill it better. is good and we can put it back in all right here we're putting this back on into where it was in the previous and we're gonna pop it on in up there and if you look right in there as long as this doesn't come out above this opening it's perfectly fine and then we have to go and attach this heat brake right here once you've got that done and you want to make it so it's just barely enough that it's actually visible. So when you go in here, and of course I've got it turned off right now heat-wise, when you go to tighten it in there, you want it so you can barely see the thread. Just a tiny bit of thread sticking out. And that should be perfectly good right there. Then we go and put this back in. And again, as long as it doesn't show, you should be good to go. Now to go to put the nozzle back in, I have to heat it back up. Uh, at this point, you gotta wait. Okay, okay. Uh, we are going to put the heat back up to 240. And we're gonna put the nozzle back in requiring us to hold this heat block and go back in here and tighten it back up. And we can go through the first round by just holding it. We're going to add this back to where it was. We're going to put the nozzle back in. We've got to heat it back up to 240. Hold on to the heater block. Get it started with this little screw-in thing. And then once we get that done, we're going to come down here Tighten it up and make sure it's good and tight. You don't want it finger tight. But again, you don't want to over tighten because you might break it. And at this point, we can put it all back together, including the fan assembly and the front fan, along with the power cable and other items that need to be attached. Okay, and the last thing we're going to do is test to make sure that this is cleared out from what we did earlier. And we're going to run the filament through manually just by pushing it all the way down. And temperatures at 240 from what it was just a minute ago. And as long as we got material flowing, we're all good to go. To recap what we've done, we've taken apart the whole entire assembly here to get out our actual heat brake and our a spin array that basically controls the flow of filament. We've taken our nozzle off to begin with. Then we took all the plastic parts surrounding it, all the screws that will come off, and then taking these two screws for the extruder, open it up, this comes out, and then you take away all that piece in there, detach it from the bottom of the heat brake, or the heat block. Then once you've got that done, we took it over and we went and bored out after heating it up with the heat gun, all the material that was stuck in the inside of the heat brake. After that was done, we took it and brought it back over, put it back on the heat brake, heat block down here oh yeah 
and we also replaced the PTFE tube up here that we had damaged in the process of trying to remove it, cutting it to size based on the one that was already in there, test fitting it to make sure it fit back in here without having it rubbing, and then after we test fitted everything, we put it all back together by reassembling the heat block to the actual aluminum thin array, and then we put it all back together in plastic, and then we tested it out to make sure that material would come out the bottom. And that was our end result, that everything works fine, and all we have to do now is a Z calibration to make sure all the nozzles hitting in the right place. The whole overall process was probably less than 15 minutes, more like about 10 minutes to do the whole entire thing. If you have all your tools in front of you, of course, if you have to go find tools, then that might take a little longer. But generally speaking, it's a pretty easy fix. And this is pretty much the end. I said my name is Justin Flugum. Thank you for watching the Active Guru channel.